Hi everyone, welcome to FT Insights. I'm Mike Fibus, and welcome back to our video series on Wi-Fi 7. In this video, we'll focus on what it is that Wi-Fi 7's capabilities make possible. And for that, of course, we have our resident expert, Andy Davidson from Qualcomm. Hi again, Andy. Good to see you again, Mike. Same here. So in the last video, we really focused on the features of Wi-Fi 7 that really enables high bandwidth, low latency connections. Now let's start talking about what it does for different applications like XR. Let's start there. XR has, you know, up until now really required a, a wired connection to the headset. And unfortunately, it's not only tethered the user, it's kind of kept the market on a leash as well. Yeah, that, that's right. And XR has different architectures that have different needs. Maybe the, the first one to think about is where you've got a VR headset is connecting to an access point and it needs to get very reliable latency, high throughput traffic through to it. And that's a, a problem that to some extent Wi-Fi 6 had started to, to address, but the new mechanisms in Wi-Fi 7 just give a lot more tools to make that happen between the, the, the AP and, and the headset. The other architecture in VR is uh, what's called, or in XR, is what's called split rendered VR, or which is very similar to uh, AR. In both those cases, you've got a device between the access point and the, the glasses or head mounted display that the user has. And to try and limit the power consumption and the processing that has to be done on the headset, you want to offload some of that to a PC or to a phone. And really what you get then is, is two links, each of which need uh, very high throughput and uh, probably low latency. Now, Wi-Fi 7 has some techniques that help that, but what's interesting in some of those Wi-Fi 7 devices that you'll see in the market, such as the FastConnect 7800 from Qualcomm, because they support high band simultaneous, you can use high band simultaneous in a different way. You can use those two different high-speed connections that can operate at the same time. One of them can be a connection to the access point and another one can be the connection to the glasses. So this is opening up applications that you just couldn't do before. In prior generations, uh, there was a technology that some of the devices supported that became pretty popular in Wi-Fi 6 called dual band simultaneous. When dual band simultaneous, it was really a 2.4 gigahertz connection and a five or six gigahertz connection. So in that application, you absolutely need the high band simultaneous capability. Yeah, so you also mentioned uh, gaming, and of course that is a big demanding application, but uh, it looks like we're taking that to the next level with Wi-Fi 7. Yeah, that, that's right. I think I, I mentioned some of those DBS type of techniques that were available in the past. Really, they were sort of targeted more at uh, what I'd call internet gaming, where it is, it is very uh, kind of low speed. You, you have a demand for latency, but uh, it, it's pretty low throughput traffic that's going. Really, the, the innovation that you want is cloud gaming. You want to be able to have uh, games that are rendered in the cloud and can be delivered to the user at very high throughput for very lifelike uh, gaming experiences, but with very low latency. You want very low downstream, very consistent downstream latency. You want very low upstream latency. So uh, every time the, the user pulls a trigger or moves their character, they, they can see the response instantaneously on the screen. And that that's a great capability for uh, high band simultaneous multi-link because that's really designed to give you high throughput, reliable low latency. Even if you're in a home where there's going to be some congestion, the congestion might be in six gigahertz, might be in five gigahertz, you don't know. That ability to very flexibly adjust to very dynamic congestion is, is one of the great capabilities you get from high band simultaneous multi-link and, and that really helps cloud gaming. Yeah, it's exciting. It really elevates high throughput, low latency. I mean, it's to the point where you can start betting your your avatar on it at the very <laughs> least. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
Um, and the enterprise, it, it feels like it's a, a mix of both of what we've spoken about. A lot more demand at home and at work, at the very least, for you know, video conferencing, but uh, some of these emerging applications as well. Yeah, the very lifelike, real-time video conferencing isn't that far away from cloud gaming. You, you want to have the high throughput, you want to have very low latency, you want the latency to be low in both directions at the same time. One of the big differences in the enterprise is that there is an entity there that's going to manage it. And uh, the Wi-Fi 6 brought along a lot of great techniques where the access point got more control to schedule traffic. What you see in Wi-Fi 7 is even more techniques added there. There's capabilities for the, the clients to communicate up to the network what their needs are, and then a, a good implementation on the access point side will be able to figure out how do I best meet the needs of all these different applications? It, it can understand, you know, which ones are high throughput and low latency, which ones are uplink and downlink, and what are the needs of these, these different capabilities? And there's a lot more techniques that are available for a good implementation to, to meet them. Yeah, that's, that's a really good point. It's one thing to give the access point all these tools to manage, but it really does matter how intelligent and how prepared the the access point really is for to take on all of this yeah it's true i mean we, we most of us a toolbox in our garage but not all of us can do something useful with it the, the there's a lot of capability in wi-fi 7 where the implementation is really going to differ between devices and we saw this in wi-fi 6 we saw that there was a, a big differences in the capabilities of schedulers for example that were in the access points and you know the mileage varied based upon how well the different tools were used it's exciting stuff andy thank you so much uh this has been a great series thank you i've enjoyed it and thanks to all of you until next time bye bye <laughs>